Hey friends, what's going on? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. Hope you guys are doing well. I really do hope that I'm contacting you from the windiest place on earth at the moment in the south of the UK. Probably not. It might be worse up north. Horrendous storm in England. Something's hit my roof like a bin and smashed loads of tiles off. Sorry, landlord. What are you going to do? Um, so if you do hear loud noises while I'm recording, it's the just the wind hitting the windows of my office. It's friggin' mental. Anyway, Chelsea news, the daily series here on Football Therapy. La da la da da da. We're gonna reflect on some of the stuff Thomas Tuchel has said in his press conference and talk about positive, fun things. Oh my God, the wind, guys! Settle in, get comfortable, drop a like, bit of housework, simple click of a button on your mouse, and it helps me out a lot. And you're all welcome to subscribe should you want to. Should you want to, friends? Um, everyone's welcome here. Should you choose to subscribe, make sure you press that bell notifications icon. Because I upload so ruddy frequently, you're going to need to be the first to watch. You know, keep up. Things are moving quickly, so all noties must be turned on. Um, okay, so let's talk about what Thomas Ducal said. I'm going to read you some quotes. I'll be referencing at Absolute Chelsea here on Twitter, a great resource. Um, I watched the press conference, but it's good to read the stuff back. So let's start on what Thomas Tuchel said about Chelsea's record signing. 97.5 million pan Belgium striker Romelu Lukaku. <clears throat> Thomas Tuchel and Romelu Lukaku. I still believe he will be, or he will score goals, because he always did. We may need more patience than we've had with Romelu Lukaku. We demand a lot from our strikers, with intensity. Mm, yeah. There are several reasons why things are like this. We're on it. We're on it! Don't worry, friends, we're on it. Some teams rely heavily on one goal scorer. There will be times like Man City who don't. Of course, Man... Of course, Man City. I think their top goal scorer might be Mares this season. Like, since Aguero left, they just share them around. They score a lot of goals, but just everyone scores. Um... Yeah, like Man City, you know, heavily like like Man City who don't. Both work, both work. We bring Romelu in better situations, more situations, to understand him better. It's an ongoing process. We still have the trust because he's proved in any club that he is the guy with the last touch. He had a very important goal for us in the final. Disappointed is not the right word. Oh, I think he was probably being posed the question, have you been disappointed with Romelu Lukaku? Look, on a couple of things there that that Tuchel has said. Granted, you know, there are two ways of doing things. And since Diego Costa, Chelsea haven't been one of those teams that rely heavily on a goal scorer. I find it interesting because Tuchel did say months and months ago, maybe as we were signing Lukaku, or to be honest, maybe before we signed Lukaku, Tuchel did say in a press conference he does want that player that he can rely on to score a lot of goals. Maybe they were talking about like a Mohamed Salah type or something. And I think he said, like, yeah, like it's good to have this guy because it's not just about this guy you can rely on for the numbers. It also takes pressure off other people who maybe, are, you know, a bit more like express they express themselves better because they know there's a full guy that's just going to bang loads of goals. So therefore, they can just you know less pressure when they take a shot. Maybe now Tuchel didn't say all that, but he spoke about the, just the benefits if you want to charge for a title to have that guy that you can lean on. I guess he had a Bamiyang scoring. He had his best ever goal scoring uh, season underneath Tuchel. Uh, so did Mbappe scored loads of goals underneath Tuchel. So he's he's generally he's generally had these guys he can rely on. Now he is talking about both of them that work. So there's that, and there's also the sort of what he cited as the Man City model. But at the beginning of the season, it was also the Chelsea model. When obviously loads of our defenders have scored this season. You know, in terms of our forwards, there's been sporadic. Uh, form Mason Mount's been good. You know, I think I think Lukaku is our top scorer now after those goals in the Club World Cup. Um, but wing backs, we had so many goals from wing backs from both Ben Chilwell and Reese James, who of course, you know, it's really really unlucky for us both of them getting injured, Chile being out for the season, and Reese James having setbacks in his his recovery. So we'll talk about that in a moment. But Chelsea were one of these teams that did both, that, you know, that distributed the goals. We all want a talisman to be like, look at Superman up front. That's just banging loads of goals. But it's not as easy these days. It's not that easy. 
Anyway, that was really interesting. It, one thing that he really was asserting, and I obviously watched the presser, many of you might have as well, that he that he's like, yes, Romelu is the guy. And, you know, nothing... He, again, I'm paraphrasing, but, like, you know, maybe it was up to us to understand him better, and, and you know, and, and we didn't start the relationship well. Yes, the interview was a colossal screw-up, but aside from that, you know, feeling each other for a new relationship, I think Chelsea were overwhelmed... The players, us as fans, were overwhelmed by Lukaku, world-class striker, you know, in terms of his output the last few years, in terms of his performances for Inter and Belgium. World-class in his prime. He's a Chelsea boy. He's the missing piece of the racking puddle. You know, wham, bam, thank you, man. This is, we're going to win the World Cup. We did win the one cu World Cup. We're going to win whatever. The point being, it was so much pressure on it that it was like, when it came, it was like, okay, but what are we, but how are we going to actually make this work? We're playing like this at the moment. How, you know, not, not to say we can't make you work, but I don't think enough, I don't know, like room was given to each other to actually work out Lukaku. But what Tuchel is saying here is, yeah, he is still the man. Anyway, we've spoken about Lukaku for too long. Let's move on. I did say I want to talk about Rhys James. Quote from Thomas Tuchel in this press conference. We always have the risk with a very physical player like Reese that you have to consider that he sometimes is a delay in the comeback. He's progressing a lot in individual training. The plan is that he rejoins the group next week. There was a setback with Reese James. We thought he at one point he was going to play in the Club World Cup and he ended up travelling, but just to just to travel and be with the team. Apparently, he got f the flu as well, which screwed up his individual training. He he's yet to return to team training. And I think you need, like, at least a week of team training before you can feature in a game. And you might not even start. You might just come off the bench. So we will see Reese James this season. Touch wood, everyone. Everyone, touch wood, touch wood. But um, for the moment, it's not, you know, it looks like we're going to have to keep on relying on Cesar Spilicueta or, indeed, one of the more offensive guys as a wingback. Um, and, and, you know, really move from there. We could even see Trev Chalaba play as a right-back and uh, in a 4-1-4-1 formation. Let's move on. Okay, so let's move on to uh, attacks and stuff like that because he, Thomas Dougal was posed a question about a settled attack and this is a big talking point. Um, everyone, and this is a quote from the Chelsea manager, everybody is maybe looking for that sort of settled front line, this continuity, like, it wasn't referenced in the question, but you know, you can imagine a, a, a Liverpool front freestyle. We have many players that have so many qualities, sometimes it's hard to pick and judge the players who, who are in best shape and who can help the most. Sometimes you interrupt a good run. Um, it's about connections. We are sti we're still looking. We switched systems lately. Oh my god, the wind. We are looking for connections for players to link up front. While you are trying, players can get injured and then they, you end up starting from scratch. True, my flat might blow down in a minute, ladies and gentlemen. He And yes, we've heard from reports, we've read in headlines, we've even heard like other press conferences, Thomas Tuchel talk about this, when he's like, he's like, he hasn't found this, con this chemistry up front yet, so he keeps looking for it and chopping and changing, which fair enough, you might wait for, okay, these guys look like they work together, but at the same time, you don't offer the players an opportunity to develop chemistry and have continuity. But he, the way he was like, I'm kind of empathetic with him because he's like, look, man, yeah, I want that. I want three players that know how to play with each other and, you know, suddenly we're scoring loads of goals and it looks really good. But at the same time, we've got all these wicked players and they are all quite good. You know, none of them are amazing. None of them are... Pl well, they can be amazing. None of them are playing amazing and none of them have chemistry yet. Do you know what I mean? So I do have sympathy with him because there's been no footballing direction, a continued ethos or philosophy at Chelsea. Like, we only buy these kind of players and play in these kind of ways. No, we change systems, we change managers, and we have talented players and none of them friggin' fit. So I do have sympathy for Tuchel and I understand why he doesn't look at any of the attackers and go, you're clearly not good enough, you're never playing. Pulisic was talismanic for Chelsea under Lampard. He's good enough. Mason Mount, absolutely good enough. Ziyech is the form, you know, the form of the bunch. He's good enough. Hudson Odoi, really creative, can play wing back. He is good enough, even if his uh, some of his outputs not the greatest. Um, Kai Havertz, absolute Royals Royce when when you get him going. He's very talented and obviously scores in big games. Romelu, you know, they're all good enough, but do they fit? So I do have sympathy, and honestly, my honest take on this is I only think this will resolve itself. 
over time if we just keep Thomas Tuchel. And obviously, it's a big ask being Chelsea Football Club with the way we are uh, our turnover with managers. But the only way I can do this is certain players want to leave because they don't play, fair enough. And then just Tuchel stays and Tuchel builds a team. That's the only way I can see this happening. He did also go on and he talked about um, Hakim Ziyech's best position in a 4-1-4-1 on the right. And he said that's why we didn't start him in the final because we were playing a 3-4-2-1. He's pretty much saying that he's not that great in that front three because the roles are different. Um, but I think he recognises how influential Ziyech is in a 4-1-4-1. Probably our most form attacker at the moment. I think he did concede to that, basically. Basically, and say, yeah, you know, I dig it. I understand. And um, finally, I want to talk about um, what he said on Ruben Loftus-Cheek, who, of course, was pretty much the only player who didn't go to the Club World Cup. Um, and it was due to an injury. He's had problems with his Achilles. Not a big injury, but painful. Since he is back, he is very strong. I can see that he feels free he is available for the game tomorrow. He goes on to confirm that this Achilles injury uh, is separate than the one he got when he was playing under Maurizio Sarri, which is good because <clears throat> that was a very, very serious one. Look, man, Thomas, I, I wanted to talk about this because Thomas Tuchel did actually seem like a quite a big fan of Ruben Loftus-Cheek. This is not me saying, <clears throat> excuse me, this is not me saying Ruben's going to be one for the future. He's going to be selected over... Conor Gallagher and whatever, all these people. But what I am saying is Tuchel recognises what Ruben brings and really likes it. He knew about him before he came to Chelsea. There's that report of when he took him to the side a few months ago and says, you're amazing. How are you not playing more for Chelsea? He then played him in a 3-5-2 with him at the base of the midfield. Maybe that's something when you can play Lukaku with a strike partner, two number eight sixes and then you know Ruben off his cheek as a lone pivot that's allowed to go forward interesting different tactics and of course in a 4-1-4-1 which seems to be our formation lately in perhaps not the biggest games he would play as a left center mid he would play as the left-sided number eight which is where he played his best football playing under Maurizio Sarri in a 4-3-3 it's basically the same role um, and he could do similar things Maybe to, you know, he can be a game changer. Let's have it right, ladies and gentlemen. Many of us have forgotten, but in some games, he can light up a pitch quite close to how Eden Hazard did. A lot of you don't want to hear that, but it's true. The way he dribbles, the way people bounce off him. Perhaps people didn't bounce off Hazard because he, he doesn't have the same physical profile. Um, but Ruben Loftus-Cheek can score a goal, he can make a key pass, he can drive the ball up the pitch, and he can absolutely body an opponent. And he can be this, like... I, I compare him to Hazard because they're both dribblers, but why I'm comparing him is because when a game's not really going your way and then one player just does something, you're like, okay, he's br he's breaking out of this collective failure. That guy there, he's moving away from the natural feeling of this game, which is a negative one, and he's changing the narrative. Hazard obviously did that all the time. Ruben Loftus-Cheek can do that. Again, this is not me saying Ruben's the future because it might not work out. And, you know, there's loads of other talented attacking midfielders on the Chelsea books. But saying that, Tuchel saying really positive stuff, saying like he looks really strong and he's feeling free, he's available for the next game. Who knows, maybe he'll start against Crystal Palace. Of course, he was on there alone, enjoyed a pretty good loan spell there, actually. But um, I think there's a lot of interesting content in this press conference, and I've really enjoyed talking about it with you guys. And hope you, hopefully, <laughs> you've enjoyed listening to it. So if you have, let me know in the comments. Comment about all the subject matter I've spoken about. And, and yeah, thank you for joining me. Please do drop a like on your way out and remember to subscribe, friends. Enjoy the football. Peace. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick. Got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper.